if you are just diving into deep learning, the number of tools and frameworks can be a bit much. Some deep learning pros might suggest TensorFlow, machine learning experts might lean towards PyTorch. That's why developers face the challenge of picking between these two tools on a daily basis. My name is Daniel and in this video I will compare TensorFlow vs PyTorch, so you can pick the one that suits you best. Some things I am going to cover today are Brief overview of the two frameworks Advantages and limitations Similarities and differences and of course, I will try to help you decide which of these frameworks is best for your project. Also, if you are just starting or want to level up your skills, feel free to take a look at the links in the description after watching this video. There are some awesome learning resources for these two tools. Ok, now it's time to start. Ok, ready? Really? One, two, three, go! PyTorch vs TensorFlow – what are they for? So, before I get into comparison, let me give you a brief overview of these two tools. What are they for and what do they offer? PyTorch – today PyTorch is a free-to-use machine learning tool. It makes it faster to go from testing ideas to putting them into action. PyTorch is designed by Meta.ai, works with Python and is built on the Torch library. It's a scientific computing tool written in C and CUDA. Even through, it's built on three complex things. PyTorch has an easy and straightforward Python interface. And it has made PyTorch one of the go-to frameworks for deep learning. With PyTorch you can create models for all sorts of cool stuff, like computer vision, understanding language, recognizing speech and even making creative AI applications. Ok guys, now let's move on to TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a super famous all-in-one open source system for machine learning. And it was designed by Google Brain. Basically, it's like an updated version of Google's Dist Belief tool. And it works on pretty much every device you can think of. It's got a bus library with all the stuff you would need for machine learning. Now, when talking about TensorFlow, you cannot ignore Keras. It's a high-level API and a user-friendly tool built on top of TensorFlow. It's what helps you easily build neural networks, even if you are not a deep learning pro. A lot of the winning teams on Kaggle use Keras because it lets them to try out new ideas super fast. Whether it's a computer vision, language processing, speech recognition or creative AI, both Keras and TensorFlow can help you build cool deep learning models. PyTorch vs TensorFlow – Pros and Cons Guys, before we move on, I try to make educational content in an entertaining way, make it fun instead of boring. And in return, I just ask to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content I make. That's all. Alright folks, let me make something clear. I don't think that any one of these tools is a loser. They are both awesome technologies for those who want to work with machine learning. However, none of them is perfect either. So, let's talk about the advantages and limitations of PyTorch and TensorFlow. PyTorch Ok, so what are the things that make PyTorch great? Well, here they are. Simplicity And first of all, it's pretty easy to use because it's designed to have a simple and consistent interfaces. Flexibility PyTorch lets you have a ton of control over how your model is set up and trained. And you don't have to deal with complicated low-level stuff. Native integration Finally, PyTorch fits right in with common Python tools, like NumPy making it all work smoothly together. Ok, but now let's talk about its limitations. Limited visualization options When it comes to visualizing stuff, PyTorch doesn't have the best options. Developers might need to use external tools like TensorBoard or rely on existing Python data visualization tools. Limited model serving Yes, PyTorch has a tool called TorchServe that's easy to use, but it's still not as compact as the TensorFlow equivalent. PyTorch is still catching up when it comes to model serving. This makes it not as popular for serious production work, not as comprehensive. Finally, when you are building apps, you might need to change your PyTorch code or model into a different framework, because PyTorch isn't an all-in-one machine learning tool. Alright guys, now let's look at TensorFlow. TensorFlow and I will start with the advantages. Various platform support. First of all, it naturally works on various platforms like regular computers, CPU, graphic cards, GPU and special purpose hardware, TPU. It's a comprehensive tool. Today, TensorFlow has grown into an all-in-one machine learning toolkit. 
It's got tools for every step of a machine learning project, from setting things up to deploying and using the models. It supports multiple programming languages. You can use TensorFlow in a bunch of different programming languages – Python, JavaScript, C++ and Java. There are also unofficial versions for Go and Swift. TensorFlow limitations Backward compatibility issues TensorFlow doesn't make your life easier. The old research in TensorFlow 1 doesn't always play nice with the new stuff in TensorFlow 2. Performance and usability issues When it comes to computation speed, benchmark tests reveal that TensorFlow is a bit slower compared to its rivals. Plus, it's not as user-friendly as some other frameworks. Training loops problems Creating training loops in TensorFlow is a bit tricky and unfortunately not so easy to figure out. PyTorch vs TensorFlow – key differences Alright, so both of these tools have their pros and cons. But folks, like I said, in my opinion, none of them is bad. And when it comes to deep learning, PyTorch and TensorFlow are the top choices. These years both technologies have evolved rapidly. Some time ago, TensorFlow was seen as more industry-focused and PyTorch was seen as a great research tool. But guys, that's not the case any longer. So what are the things that make these tools different? Let's talk about it in more detail. Performance and scalability TensorFlow really stands out when it comes to performance and handling big tasks. It's great for large-scale training, making it a top pick for real-world use. TensorFlow's built-in tool TensorBoard is awesome for visualizing and fixing issues. PyTorch is getting better in these regards. Recent updates have made it more scalable, supporting distributed training and letting you train models on multiple GPUs or machines. But for deploying massive models in real-world situation, TensorFlow is still ahead. Model availability Both TensorFlow and PyTorch give you access to lots of pre-trained models. TensorFlow has TensorFlow Hub and PyTorch has PyTorch Hub. And these guys are like gold mines for ready-to-go models. Whether you are into interface, fine-tuning or deployment. And folks, let me be clear. TensorFlow Hub has around 1300 models covering computer vision, text and audio. PyTorch Hub has around 50 models, making TensorFlow a way better choice for pre-trained model collections. Flexibility If you are diving into advanced research or want more freedom to get creative, PyTorch is the way to go. Its dynamic computation graph lets you design more complex and innovative model structures. But PyTorch is the top choice for quick prototyping and experimentation. Yes, TensorFlow is trying to catch up in terms of flexibility. But PyTorch was designed for simplicity in the first place. That's why it has a bit of a head start. Deployment For deploy and train models, TensorFlow wins with TensorFlow Serving, offering a straightforward solution. New PyTorch releases offer improved deployment, but for web deployment you would need additional tools like Flask or Django. In addition to that, TensorFlow Serving is a preferred choice for performance concerns. In general, TensorFlow is a dominant in large companies and production, known for its robustness. However, PyTorch is gaining popularity, beating TensorFlow in searches. It's becoming preferred in research and development for its user-friendly interface and flexibility, evident in successful models like ChatGPT. PyTorch vs TensorFlow – Final Thoughts Ok, guys, now, considering all you have just learned, let's answer a big question. Which tool should you pick for your machine learning projects today? And honestly, guys, I don't have a clear answer here. Because PyTorch vs TensorFlow debate doesn't have a clear winner. And in my opinion, it depends on your specific use case. PyTorch is user-friendly with dynamic computation graphs, TensorFlow is mature with more libraries but may take more time to learn. That's why, before picking a deep learning framework, consider your project goals. If you want a pass learning framework with less effort, PyTorch is a good fit. But if you need a production-ready tool for heavy calculations, TensorFlow might be the better choice. Alright, my friends, that's all about my PyTorch vs TensorFlow comparison. I left all the useful links in the description below, so you can improve your skills with these machine learning and deep learning tools. Feel free to check it out. Also, if you found this content enjoyable, don't forget it to give it thumbs up. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, until next time.